What, just doing vocal exercises? Please don't try to summon Cthulhu. What's up, you guys? This is Gamer Lynn. Hey, Gamer Becca. And we are 10 times 10. And sometimes I'm just a crazy person. Trying to summon Cthulhu. I, I wasn't. I wasn't. That was not my goal. If I did, literally, if that would have happened, it would have just like, Cthulhu, can you go back, bro? That was accident. I, that was not on purpose. I thought, oh, oh, really? It's, it's good to know that that could happen. But. Oh, okay, you just don't go think you're going to waste my time. Oh, dang. Summoning me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Cthulhu, what can you do? You'd be even more mad. It's just like, <laughs> 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 like, how dare you? I'm, the audacity. Sir. Really? Because I am a god. <laughs> Anyways, okay. But are you really? <laughs> He's kind of a, uh, it's like a kaiju, I think. Anyways, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so we discovered, you discovered. I discovered. You discovered I this discovered. awesome website slash company called Quantic Foundry. They're really cool. They're a market research company that's focused on gamer motivation and they combine social science with data science to understand what drives gamers so uh it's pretty cool um there's like a little uh five minute uh survey or like quiz basically that you can take on uh quanticfoundry.com uh and you can get your class that you fall into and also your kind of like subclass so lynn this is, uh, this is where i call shenanigans a little bit <laughs> Proceed. Oh, yeah, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Tell them what you tested as. So I took the survey and I ended up testing as what they would define as a bard, which I could kind of see how they came to that conclusion because some of the benefactors or, or the things that made me fall into that class was that I do enjoy social gaming. Uh, I get a lot of reward from social or social engagement or community. Which, to a degree, I have, to, I have to admit, I enjoy that idea. I've always, one of my goals as far as doing the YouTube thing, playing different types of games, not only being video game and tabletop, uh, I get a lot of enjoyment from social engagement and also creating a community or being part of a community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of enjoyment in that. It's, it's being able to share time with people who are, don't even have to be a same mind, but just same aspect of being a part of a greater number of people who also enjoys the things you like enjoying. Yeah. So uh. they got me there, but there was some aspects of it too where it was like, I don't know, I will probably lean more this way than this way. But uh, again, if you're a bard as well, or if you've taken this test before, or if you end up taking the test and you find yourself uh, falling into the bard category, I would definitely love to know your opinions in the comment section or just contacting us because mm -hmm. I really feel like like I do fit that niche to a certain extent, but I wouldn't classify myself as a part. But then again, though, when I think hard on it, I don't know what other category I could fall into. But you ended up getting a gladiator. <laughs> um, which sounds like super like intense so basically when i pulled up the site and everything like that because i i like to have notes because i couldn't remember yeah. off the top of my head pull up notes uh, <laughs> okay uh so basically it says uh my gamer type motto is dedicated hardcore gaming uh, my primary dominant player type is the gladiator so um, they say that gladiators are competitive gamers who are more likely to identify as hardcore which I don't necessarily, but man, I guess. Uh, and, the, and they want games to engage them using a broad spectrum of features. That is true. Um, they're looking for, for an epic skill-based experience in the games that they play. I suppose so. Um, lately, the games that I've kind of been into and everything like that have been, I think, are more classi classified as like, comfy games um but 
like one that I've been uh, going through right now is called um, Forager, um, where it's it's a whole lot of crafting, but there is a lot of fighting uh, and whatnot, kind of like a Stardew Valley type feel and hmm. whatnot. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. But then at the same time, if I jump into a game like, say, like Dragon Age, Inquisition, Skyrim, uh, uh, Persona 5, uh, Royal or even um, Strikers. Oh, Strikers. There we go. Strikers. Um, and everything, like, I tend to... I, I go hard. You demolish the game. <laughs> I go hard. <laughs> so, so, I guess I I'm a hardcore gamer, I but I have never categorized, categorized myself as that. So I, I can, because I've seen you do it. I've literally seen you, yeah, you pick devour up those games and game. you devour the game. <laughs> And it, does, it almost seems like it doesn't take, it doesn't matter how much time it's going to take, even though in the end, I really feel like, especially compared to my speed on a game, uh-huh. you do it a lot quicker than I can <laughs> to demolish a game or finish a game or even to, I think the only thing that keeps you from being or fitting that niche of Gladiator would be the fact that I think once you, once you become happy with your completion in the game, then you're done. Yeah. Even though, granted, I've seen it where you have completed the game just to go back and re-complete the game, aka Inquisition. Well, I mean, that's because like that. I, that's because like the relationship aspect of it and everything, and trying to like. Which that's what I mean. It's like you completed the yeah. game and almost to the point where it's like you gotten. I think I felt like you got the ending you were satisfied with, and I think going forward with the series, that's just going to be your mindset with what the game. But you still went back and played it again. Yeah. Yeah, like four times. Yeah, I think, and, yeah, and I still and I I feel like it's like it's almost like and my, you still end up trying to lean back to that first. I one. do. I, do, I think I remember one time. Oh too, my I'm like, gosh. Are you up here talking to Soul again? Stop talking to him. I know. Stop soul solace. <laughs> yeah. Talk egg, to somebody else. Big <laughs> head, betrayer, <laughs> broke my heart. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. So was, yeah, I I can I can agree with that profile to a certain extent, and I, I think I think I had the same disagreement for you as I do with myself with the profile uh-huh. thing. I think it's really hard to put gamers into a particular niche. Yeah, it's like horoscope. Because, yeah, because it's like horoscoping. <laughs> but at the same time, too, though, I think it really does nail aspects of how you if if you took away everything as far as past experience or what your own personal ego of an experience Mm -hmm. if you got right down to the gameplay it does nail that for you as far as you do play games yeah to a certain completion whether it be your own completion Uh or you went as far as the game will allow you to go sure you do do that the only game that i platinumed thus far in my entire gaming career has been ratchet Ratchet and and Clank ripped apart and I am so happy that I did. Yeah. Because that one, I think, really, if there was more content available to you in that game, you would be continuing to play it. Which I think it will eventually get probably some DLC There's, to it. Technically, in my second playthrough and everything, I actually kind of want to go back and play uh, and everything like that. There are some, like, new things that I can just kind of, like, explore and, like, you know, like, do things and whatnot. But... Okay. Yeah. But so anyways, you're... I found, I found mine. So, uh, it's... The Moto... Or moat, or how you say that? Motto. Motto. Thank you, moto. <laughs> my moto, my <laughs> mojo, baby. Lord. All right. My motto for the bard is playing a part in the grand story. Hmm. So your primary dominant player type is the bard. Bard are team players who want to chat and interact with other players in the game worlds that are rich with lore, stories, discovery, and customization. For them, the game is a grand story that emerges from a community of players. So, the aspect of the whole grand story that emerges with a community of gamers, I do agree with that. Because, Mm -hmm. again, that's one of my favorite things about tabletop role-playing games is that I am playing a part in a story or I'm helping tell a part of a story with other players' interactions as well. So, I very much do enjoy that aspect. But the parts where I could disagree with it is, for me personally, is the a player who wants to chat and interact with other players in game worlds that are rich. Okay, there should be some asterisks <laughs> to this section because I do enjoy that. 
again, I do enjoy being able to play tabletop role-playing games with other players. And, of course, you're going to chat and there's going to be side banner and stuff like that mm-hmm. that goes along with it. The only problem I have with that is, is that I think I am not the most sociable person. Like, like if you were to meet me in person in real life, one, I really feel like what happens sometimes, too, is that I'm not easy to approach sometimes. No. Like, people don't just run up to me and immediately want to strike up conversation. No. That's me. Yeah. That's that's more Becky. <laughs> but, I mean, I could do that with people. But the other thing, too, though, is that I don't... I'm not necessarily of the mindset or type of person who is okay just chatting it up with anybody. Right. Like, like... I I, th- I think I get along with a, almost everybody or a lot of people, but I don't think like personally, I go out of my way to have those kind of interactions. Nor will I force myself to chat up with somebody who I think we're not like either we're not clicking or not getting along, or it's just not my cup of tea. I'm not enjoying myself. So, like if I'm bored in the conversation, I will excuse myself. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, so taking away, like, the random person aspect, um, I think that it does apply to you. So it has to be a solid group of friends. Friends. Because you you would, you and Matt and Alex, like, regale me with, you know, like, stories of how you guys used to play WoW together. Yeah. And everything. And you guys were, like, pretty intense on that and everything like that. Um, And you enjoyed that. Yeah. And also, too, when we were playing Final Fantasy XIV with everybody... Uh, like for a time, like you, we were we were all deep into that and everything like that, mm-hmm. and like we all had a lot of fun. But, but it has to be a, like, either 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 you have to click, yeah, or you have to no longer be a stranger to me. Cause that's the whole thing. Yeah. It's like how does anybody become friends if not you know starting with them being strangers? Strangers, it's yeah. like yeah, you're right. I've have conversation with strangers and it totally clicked and we got to know each other and we got like literally. I think with me is if. We continue talking past that five minute to seven minute or ten minute threshold where things are just like awkward and weird and you're feeling each other out. Mm-hmm. More than likely, we're 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 on we're past strangers at that point. Hmm. But I don't know. I feel like I've hit a lot of walls with people where it's like in that five for first five minutes, it's just not there. Sure. And either I'm waiting for that polite moment. To excuse myself. Mm-hmm. To go and like, to either, and I feel like it's almost an admission of, yeah, this thing, and I feel bad sometimes too, because I feel like maybe they feel like, oh yeah, this is going, this is a great conversation. And I'm in the back of my head going, nah, this ain't really, you know, we're not, we're not. And the whole thing too is like, everyone has, everyone's threshold for that is different. Yeah. Um, and I would say with you, um, with your own experiences and that sort of things with like different types of people that you've like let in and everything like that um, it you know kind of like what you're looking for basically mm-hmm. you know kind of like it sounds so bad it's almost no, 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 like, no. like you're no, going yeah. out and like, like are, dating. You, are you dating these people right, like, right, right, no. Right, no, no 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 but at the same time <laughs> it's like you at a certain point like you just kind of know what you want you know what I mean yeah. like you this is why I don't fault anyone that is a picky eater because it's like you know what you want, you yeah. know what you don't like, you know. Which, you yeah, know. when it comes to stuff like that, it's like I mean, like all right, I'm already gonna make some of y'all mad with this one because <laughs> I am not the pineapple on my pizza kind of person, and I, I guess this is a great example to show how I work socially as well. Lol. I do not like pineapples on my pizza. If you like it, cool. It's still gonna gross me out. And it's not gonna change. I don't care how what degree you cook it at. I don't yeah. care how, how many you try spices to it. or how you prepare it. I'm still not gonna like it. Even if you catch me to where you disguise it as a pepper or something like that or whatever, and I bite into it and I'm going like that ain't that bad. It's like, oh yeah, Lynn, that's pineapple. I'm gonna immediately go in the back of my head going, no, how dare you? And this, yeah, once I figure it out, it's done. <laughs> That's how I am socially, You've too. you betrayed me. You betrayed me. You lied to me. Yeah. This is really done now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I will, you know, basically agree. Like, that wasn't terrible. It actually right. was pretty good, but no. See, where you really lose, Lynn, 
is mangoes. Yeah, I hate mangoes too. Yeah, that's where that's like, where you'll I actually really like pineapple. I like pineapple. I just don't think it goes on the pizza, but I really just like mangoes. Yes, and that's bad too because actually when I was younger, I used to like mangoes. We change. Yeah, I don't know. Some change. We change. Taste yeah. buds change. Perspectives change, so, et cetera. So, anyways. I think it nailed me. I think it nailed me to a certain T. Because I, I yeah. really think, actually, if I was truly honest with myself, mm-hmm. I am a bard because I get the most reward from playing games and being able to chat and be social. Yes. It's just when it doesn't click that... You know, I'm not the type of person that's gonna force it to click. Yeah, I'm not the type of person that gets enjoyment. Yeah, or you're gonna, just like, or I'm gonna done. lie I'm that done. I'm I'm happy or enjoying it. Something right. Like yeah, I'm like, not that person. He will excuse himself. I will excuse drop myself, it, drop stop it, stop playing, whatever. Stop playing, mm-hmm. be done. You're tr- that or, is true. Hopefully, that's the nice part of it because I've been in some situations where it did not end well. Yeah, <laughs> and I'd rather not go there. Eh. <laughs> I mean, that's part of life, and, and that's life. Yeah. And, and, and that's the whole thing. It's like, it's really important to be honest with yourself. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. really important. If you're not that type of person, don't try to force yourself to be. Mm-hmm. Be open-minded to the experience because you might ex- surprise yourself. Sure. But don't go in just lying left and right to yourself because you're not going to really enjoy yourself. And in the end, people around you are not going to enjoy themselves either. Yeah. And it's like, trust that you know what you don't like. Yeah. So. But definitely, I dug this survey. It was fun. It's, oh, and there's a bunch insightful. of other gamer types that uh, obviously, like, we didn't fall under, like the acrobat, the gardener, the slayer, mm-hmm. the skirmisher, uh, ninja, bounty hunter, architect. Jeez. Uh, yeah, and I think that's it. And then yeah. we were the Bard and the Gladiator. So if you are interested in taking this lovely survey, go to Quantic Foundry dot Quantic Q U A N T I C Foundry F O U N D R Y dot com. Oh, we'll put it somewhere in here too. This is not sponsored. Not sponsored. <laughs> we, we just thought it was fun. Really cool. Yes. Also, too, they have other surveys as well as far as capturing what type of board gamer are you. Yeah. And also, too, they give you very good insight and detail onto mm-hmm. all the different questions that you answered. What was it pertaining to as far as measuring out like different things? Like, you know, okay, do you like action games when you play do you like the sociability in the video game do you like to be just a master of a game Mm -hmm. uh do you like to immerse yourself or the creativity that goes in the game and Mm -hmm. then also too are you an achievement hunter yep and they show you your percentile on how you based off of how you answered and go into detail what this represents we wanted to for the last thing for us to talk about we wanted to talk about e3 versus everyone sad days Okay, not necessarily sad, because again, uh, it's been uh, several weeks since E3 has happened. And again, last year, E3 didn't happen because of the pandemic. Of course. Um, And basically, everybody in the industry had to pivot a bit. One, because again, you didn't have an E3 and some of the shows that highlight showing off video games. Mm -hmm. Some were still able to perform or do it, but even then, it was later in the year, in which everybody was starting to figure out, well, we could still do a showcase Mm -hmm. that doesn't pertain to us having to meet in the side of a building and stuff like that. Right. And But granted, though, this was the problem, too, because it then left and started the debate, even though I think it kind of started a little bit before that, too, Uh with uh, Nintendo's Oh, yeah, their Nintendo Direct type thing. Yeah, the Nintendo Direct thing. Mm -hmm. Because they were, I think, the first representative of, hey, you don't have to come into a stuffy building <laughs> to show off what's new or what games you got coming up. Sure. And everybody from there started to pivot, including Sony sure. and different other people yeah, in the Yeah, their PlayStation industry. Access thingy. So E3 also pivoted and said, hey, we're going to do a digital showcase instead of being in person. And we're going to allow, you know, basically it was almost like invitation, like, you know, who wants to come to the show? Who wants to show off? Sure. Xbox was the big, you know, hands up, like, definitely, we're signing on. Let's go. Let's do this. And then, I, I think, I almost want to say a couple of other companies simultaneously probably did the same thing with Xbox. And then, 
as the show was starting to grow with more and more people wanted to participate, other people jumped on as well. Hmm. So, E3 went off without a hitch. Uh, it actually kind of did have a couple of hitches because it was very weird in a way. Because technically it didn't say that it was a part of E3, but it was on the same weekend as E3. Oh, the Summer of Gaming the with Summer Jeff Gaming. Knightley. Yeah. Uh, that was more of like an Amazon put, yeah. put together Amazon thing. Amazon put together kind of thing, but yeah. it didn't, you know, I think, I, I feel like it was still, felt like it was an association with E3. With E3, E3 but without with being. Enough difference mm-hmm. to Maybe. be separate. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know how that worked. I or, just, I just know I missed the world premiere guy, but. E3 said that he was okay, so I believe him. Well, well, even into that, that wasn't like the place where he usually associated <laughs> no, with. No, as no, no, well. I know. It's just like I it felt was the just same funny. way too. Like, like I, I know the world. There's no world premiere voice. What do I do? But I'm like feeling, feel, uh, filling it in in my in my head. If, I felt world like if it <laughs> if it happened, even though yeah, I think I did the same thing a couple of times. Too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because Jeff Keighley's voice and everything is associated with that as well but that's what also made it feel weird because it almost, oh De- is it jeff Knightley? i forget no it's funny it's it, it's funny it's funny, I, it's funny. Ah. anyways it's <laughs> my point is is yes. that it felt weird because i associate him with the video game awards yes and yes this wasn't the video game awards no no it was not yeah it was still entertaining <laughs> and very cool and almost of the same niche sure which, again, I think was very good because it plays his strength. Yeah. I felt it was bad because now it's like, okay, is this something? Yeah. Was it something different from E3? Mm-hmm. Is this now associated with the video game awards? Are you like, a traitor now? No, just like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, yeah, is this, one what I, what, this is what I have to expect from the video game awards now. It's like Amazon's mm-hmm. going to tie themselves to it as well or... Well, I, I mean, they're what you call it, Amazon and Netflix, like up here mm. trying to jump into the the gaming pool. So, which makes you know. sense. Which makes sense. Yeah. I um, mean, but, <laughs> but either way, I don't know if they were collaborating with E3 or it was just a matter of hey, we bought out or wanted to do this slot before E3 to keep right. us keep uh, the introduce E3, but also keep us separate in a way. But yeah, either way. Um, that happened first, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of premieres, a lot of showcasing of Yee. different things. Yeah, and I, 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 it was kind of cool because it was it was lighthearted indie, and then until the very end, until the very end, Elden Ring. Yeah, <laughs> Elden Ring was the big showcase. Trump. Everybody was like, "What?" <laughs> and with that, it was like, yeah, it felt very E three with that because it almost felt <laughs> like it was an introduction. Because it, it was a long-awaited trailer or yes. figuring out what this game was going to be. Mm-hmm. And then in E3, it was elaborated on. Mm-hmm. Either so. way, that was that was showcased. And that was like literally surprised to everybody. And it was a welcome surprise. Yet, though, at the same time, too, even when we got our answers, we're still... I think some of us are still on the edge of our seats going, what does this mean, though? Mm-hmm. Like... Mm-hmm. I don't think we're gonna get our answer until we get it in our hands. Yeah. Which I think I think yeah, it's still this year. From what I remember, I think. Is it? Was it still this year? No. January oh. of next year. Oh next year. Okay, it was the beginning of next year. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Again, I'm not <laughs> okay. gonna be anybody that don't make it this year, I'm not mad at you. No, I agree. We just I agree. came from the most horrible year that most of us will ever know. It's probably. very true. The impossible year. And the impossible year. Uh, like the Panic and of the Disco song. I think that year gives everybody a pass for this year. <laughs> so if you have to delay into next year, I most, much sooner would like you to do that than to just try to rush something. Let's see. Yeah, Halo Infinite is supposed to be this year. Far Cry 6. Yeah, Far Cry um, 6, I think, had enough time. Deathloop. Yeah, that one's had enough time. Back for Blood. That one, if it delays, I'll be fine with. Even though, really, actually, no. I really would like, if they need, if you need the time, guys, take it. Seriously. Back for Blood. Because I'm actually, yeah, I'm really hyped for that game. Oh, okay. Um, Hitman 3, did that one come out already? It already came out. Okay. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Eh, that ain't my cup of tea, but um, I can see that one. Yeah, if you need it. I don't think they need to delay. I think they had enough time to work on that Psychonauts one. Psychonauts 2? No, that one should be this year. Okay. 
Um, Returnal's already out. Monster Hunter Red's already out. Uh, we still have to play It Takes Two. Yeah, we still have to play It Takes Two. Um, Kenya! I, or Kenna. I wanna, Kenna. yeah, 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 the Bridge of Spirits, the little girl Oh, that one might get delayed. I think it's already been delayed, but I don't think oh, it's okay. been delayed until next year yet. Okay. I don't remember. I know it got delayed, though. Okay. And then there's a Super, uh, Mario 3D Our World. With, came out already. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, The Ascent? That one's still, I think that one's still gonna come out this year. Actually, it's really weird on that one, because... Uh-huh. I feel like I don't think it's out yet, but the PC advertises it almost like it is out. But I think it's just like it's trying to gear up for pre-orders. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay, Ghost but, yeah. uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. That one's next year. That one got delayed. Oh, okay. And the Age of Empires four. Uh, that should be this year. Okay. Uh, Writers Republic. That should be this year. Rainbow Six Extraction. That one I don't remember. Oh, I, stray! Not... The one where you play as a cat, I think. I want. I everybody wants that one this year, but yeah. sure. So yeah, if I imagine if you could delay, because if you could put more into the game, do it. But that one would probably be this year. Oh my god, this list is humongous. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's, why, that's why it's like, bro. There's like. N- there almost should be no excuse for any kind of like basically what everybody is afraid of now is basically Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven happening again, which I feel like with what that has happened again with the uh, Dark Alliance Dungeon and Dragons game, I really feel like if they put that in the kitchen to cook longer, that one would have came out with not so much controversy around oh, it. Oh, Dark Alliance. Yeah, because yeah. that one came out with. A little bit more controversy than I expect. Even though we have Uh friends that played it on... They playing it on... PC. They're playing it on PC. Yeah. They basically already said, like, it's been patched a Uh couple of times. And it's a lot more playable than when it first came out. Yeah. But even then, too, I think because of the backlash of that sort of thing happening with games now. Like, people are way more hesitant now. Yeah, way more hesitant to try or jump into a game now. And then that window passes... Yep. And it becomes a way less success than it could have been before. Sure. And I don't I don't know what the development game was for Dark Alliance as far as hmm. them going forward making DLC content or mm. making Or if it was like a one off thing. Expansions and stuff like that, or if it was just a one off thing. I see. Cause yeah, that's the whole thing. Know. That could hurt it to where that mm. we don't we don't see that happen now. So I guess that leads to the conversation now with the really what we put the topic on the list for. Because again, there's been so much news dropped from the E3 that it almost feels like it fell back. It fell back. It came back into form with this past E3, and kind of like went back into the thing that we used to love doing. Like, okay, who's showcasing what? And then you know, basically what everybody ends up doing too is like, who won? <laughs> at E3 and stuff like that. I know. Like, who, who put on the best presentation? Who, who, which actually, you know, people like Alan Sessler and some people are always saying like, you know, it's not a matter of winning E3 or something like that, but actually it kind of is because mm-hmm. again, E3 is literally one of those showcases where people go to basically promote things. Yeah. Not only show you what's coming, promote things and also to get a good guesstimate of what people are excited for. Yes. What people want. Gauge the reaction. Gauge the reaction. Yeah. And that was the one thing I really miss about because I've had the experience of going to E3 uh, two times. Lucky. <laughs> yeah. And my whole thing was when I went yes, it's over the top sometimes and some things there that are unnecessary. But especially, I, like, I like that. <laughs> Well, I mean, to the degree, like, let's say, for example, oh. um, the the game booth girls. There was a big issue back in the day or some number of years ago where it's like, oh, yeah, you know, booth babe girls. We don't need oh, that the booth there. Babes. <laughs> you know, they're basically just there to hype up a game to people that go there to a bunch of sweaty, fat, hold stinky hold nerds. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh-oh. Counterpoint. Uh-huh. Football games, cheerleaders. But that's been, like, established into what football is, because, you know, that's actually... And you're catering to a wait, bunch wait, wait, of big, sweaty... No, because it's, it's actually a sport. 
is actually a competition sport. So is video games, esports. Okay, well, yeah, okay. So that's that's what the, that's that's what I'm saying. There's, <laughs> that's, there's the arguments. Of, yeah. Okay, there's no reason for it to be there, but then there's our reasons for it to be there. But the problem was is that okay, boom, you know, booth babe girls don't really contribute if anything. They contribute to this idea of you know. Uh, catering to men and that this is a a a genre or a league of people that are just men which is like that's never been true there's always been women in the video game aspect to which i say and they don't have to be presented in one way or the other to which i say we should have booth babes and do booth guys too we borderline have had that because I mean, I'll look at both. I mean, because that's all day. Yeah, we've, technically, <laughs> and I will enjoy both. <laughs> technically, we've had that too. Because literally, I think I think the problem was is that they were being very small minded when it came to that. Yeah. And w- what I mean when I say that is is that yeah, a lot of promoters always thought like, okay, scanly cl- uh, clothed women are the way to promote games because that's the problem in the video games. That's how they're being promoted. Just get cosplayers. But. Exactly. Let me get let me get some let me see some Chun Li over there. Let me see uh uh what you call it a uh, uh, Gladiotus <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over but, there some Prompto. But so. that's that's the whole thing. It's like they got to get out of that mind aspect of that where it's not about having women with the least amount of clothes. No. And pressed up boobies no. to represent. Give me a Laura Croft over there. No, no, no. It's not even that. It's not even that. It's literally an aspect of. Dude, these are icons yes. that you have created with video games. Yes. These are recognizable representations and, and avatars and uh, promoters of your game. Mascots. And, yeah, they're mascots. Yeah. Give me a Crash Bandicoot running around somewhere. You don't even have to pay anybody to go to these things. I mean, well, not like like literally like assign people to... People will just come to your shows yeah. and your things dressed as these people. Yeah. I never understood that part, but that was part of the trouble back in the day for E3. Hmm. Now the other one it is, is that it's unnecessary. E3 in the age of online content, streams and things like that, going to a building just to promote things is very unnecessary when you can just make a short half hour video mm. which is what these companies are now starting to do yeah but my problem is like, it, this is more cost effective yeah, you don't have to pay for plane tickets and hotels and food and burr, 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 and a I booth. get it I get it it costs a lot of money but I think they lost that aspect because everybody went in thinking we had to do this grandiose show sure we had to make these crazy no not really if, I won't say we had to stay into this literally lay out, fold out tables with some cloth on it and then just set up some TVs and some consoles and stuff like that. You can put a little bit more presentation, but you don't have to go that far. It's literally about connecting the fans with the games. And there's many aspects to go about it. And you can do it to where it's cost effective. Yeah, that's true. That is true. It really is possible. Not everything has to be a spectacle. Not everything. Just yeah. make it nice. Y'all, if anything, somebody somebody you hired in order to keep their job made it this way. Yeah. Somebody, you know, basically is like, oh, you know, hey, I saw what they did at E3 over there. You know, we can make a bigger thing. Yeah, yeah. With way more pretty things. And right. that was just that person mm-hmm. going, pay me to do this for you because I need a job. Which I don't. Which my whole thing is like, I'm totally not against that, you know? Yeah. People trying to do stuff to, you know, do their craft and put in work. But at the same time, too, I can simply go, you know what? You're right. But you know what? I Instead of doing it there, I want you to do that in my game. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I want you to put that in my game. Hmm. I wanted you to put that effort into what we're actually doing, the actual product. Hmm. But, you know, I digress because, again... I don't know what all goes into that right. and how that proliferate. I feel that's just one of my ideas of how that happened and how that got out of hand. But 
Either way, now the argument is, though, is that E3, do we do this in front of people or not? Do we sell tickets for a venue or do we just do this all online? And mm -hmm. I say yes and no to both. Because I feel like whenever you lean into one, you lose the, the benefit of the other. I agree. Just do both. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's the way I feel like with this last E3. It was really great to see E3 back. It was really great to see these people on these stages and doing the things that they were doing and everybody's passion of what they had to show. Even though there was a couple of them in E3 that didn't really have anything to show mm. and probably should have skipped. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I, I guess give them some points for effort. Or whatever they thought they were doing. Participation. Participation, yeah. Uh. Because, again, even the idea of somebody that wants to try to do something or try to help the industry is better than them just not doing anything. Sure. And literally, that I, I hate to... Because I don't want to point fingers with this. No, yeah. But I almost have to point the finger at Sony a little bit here. Because oh, okay. really, Sony felt like... You know, I, I think... Nintendo has fell off the bandwagon as well from E3. But at least they did have a showcase that was closely tied to it. Where Sony really, I mean, other than the developers and certain teams, really didn't feel like they tried to participate in any kind of way. And it almost feels like, dude, in this industry that has given you so much, you have to at least show up in some type of shape or form. Hmm. Way more than they did in this past E3. Sure. They really, they really, I, I, I get it. You have this internet thing that you do and to a certain extent it works well for you or well enough. But I really feel like as an icon in the Asian industry, you have to, you still have to always push yourself to do more and be there. Especially that's the whole thing for me for E3. E3 always equated to community. Right. Which which we are we just got done discussing about was E three was a chance for people to come together to geek out over what they were fans of and to see the latest and newest thing. And then when I actually went to E three, I learned there was a lot more to it as well too. Mm. I learned there's a business aspect to E three. I learned that there's a you know job opportunity aspect to E three. There's literally a money and income drive for a lot of businesses around where E3 would take place. Hmm. You know, hotels depended on that 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 event. Yeah. You know, there's vendors. There's, a, you know, there's an economy that we builds help around. We help boost the economy. Yeah. So it's like, just like when we lost WonderCon out in San Francisco, right. they moved away. Mm -hmm. There was a loss there that was felt. There was a void that yeah. did not get filled mm -hmm. when that happened. So it's like, it's not just what you, it's it literally the picture goes way further than what certain people paint it as. Because mm. you hear it all the time or you read it all the time on these forums and stuff like that where it's like, E3 is very unnecessary, do away with it. And it's like, no, E3 was very important. Yeah. Maybe not to everybody. Sure. But there is a, there's a community, there's, there's an economy that depends on E3 or things like E3 to happen sure that's almost like i feel like with e3 or people saying do away with e3 is like them saying do away with dragon con hmm. do away with comic con because that's what's going to end up happening and i don't think a lot of people understand that aspect of it it's like if you get rid of one the other are the other things that are like it or similar to it, it are in jeopardy too sure now i'm gonna get off my soapbox <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that's it. Um, so, yeah, this concludes our uh, part two of episode four. Uh, thanks for sticking around, guys. And um, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Let us know down in the comments uh, what you thought of uh, any sort of topic that may have been very interesting to you. Um, and, uh, yeah, until next time, I'm Gamer Rebecca. I'm Gamer Lynn. And we, and we want, want you to keep, keep it 100. 100. Bye.